Hi YouTube, Darth here. Today I want to help you improve your aim. There's a couple of common mistakes I see players who are new to Battlefield make, and some things that even experienced players can benefit from. Many players familiar with shooters like Battlefield will already have a good handle on what I'm going to talk about, and I will also have a few things that have helped me recently that I'd like to share with other experienced players. So if you think you know everything, I'd still recommend listening to everything, but I won't hold it against you if you skip ahead a bit. So sit down, and let's figure out how we can improve your aim. To get started, I wanted to talk about recoil and bullet spread. These two concepts are familiar to many shooter players, but I still see players making mistakes with this. For starters, I'm using the Ace-23 and Assault Rifle for the Assault class. For the purposes of this example, I'm using no attachments. I'm going to fire this gun without stopping and show you the resulting recoil and bullet spread. As you can see, the bullets force the gun upwards and slightly to the right. This is the recoil pattern of the gun. As the length of time that I fire increases, the bullet spread also increases. Here's another example. This time, let's see what happens when I pull my mouse down and slightly to the left to compensate for the recoil. This time, the bullets made a more localized target, but ended up still ballooning into a large radius. This is the bullet spread of the weapon. Again, the longer the trigger is held down, the more evident this bullet spread becomes. I've already shown you a technique for countering recoil, but it's not very effective at countering bullet spread. Simply pulling your weapon in the opposite direction as the recoil of a weapon will keep your shots on target, but it won't give you great precision. Instead, to counter both recoil and bullet spread, you'll want to fire your weapon in bursts. This means firing a few shots at a time, which will help to keep the bullet spread low. As you can see, simply firing in bursts without countering the recoil will still send you far off target. You'll want to counter the recoil as you fire in bursts. Let's try that again. Now I have both great accuracy and a tight spread of bullets around the intended target. These two methods in combination are great for controlling your weapon and getting your shots on target. But these are only the basics of today's tutorial. One thing you should be aware of with any weapon in Battlefield 4 is that they all have bullet drop and bullet velocity. The reason you should be concerned is that these factors will affect just how much you have to lead your target. Weapons with higher velocities and lower drops can be aimed much closer to the intended target. This, in combination with recoil and spread, has a profound effect on the effective range of a weapon. In Battlefield 4, the recon-only bolt-action sniper rifles have the lowest bullet drop and highest velocity. This makes them very good at extreme range. Assault rifles tend to have good bullet velocity and modest bullet drop, making assault rifles, depending on the rifle, good at close to long range. Finally, weapons like the Engineer PDW have low bullet velocity and are almost always effective at close range only. So choose your weapon to suit your tastes. Now this is going to seem like Firearms 101 to people, but to counter bullet drop you simply aim above your intended target at long range. With most weapons, this is simply a matter of using your eye and your estimation. However, there is a distinct advantage on sniper rifles in Battlefield 4 in that you can zero your scope to give you a more accurate target. Zeroing your scope resets your crosshairs on your scope to be accurate to the range you set. On PC, this is the V, as in Victor, key which allows you to set multiple ranges. Some sniper rifles come with a range estimation on the side of the weapon, but you can also get a good idea of how far away your target is by looking at nearby UI clues like capture points. As for bullet velocity, you must lead your target more or less depending on the bullet velocity of your weapon. The class of the weapon you're using, combined with your range to the target, greatly affects the amount of lead that you must give that target. The further you are from your target, the more you must lead. The slower your weapon, again, the more you must lead. Remember where you aim in Battlefield 4 matters. There are distinct regions of the player bodies that give bonuses or penalties to the damage that your bullets are doing. If you're not the best aim in the world, you will probably want to aim for the center mass most of the time. You'll find that most weapon recoil carries your follow-up bullets into the head of the target. In Battlefield 4, you've got tons of choices on which weapon you want to use to suit your playstyle. You've got assault rifles, carbine, dedicated marksman rifles, personal defense weapons, shotguns like machine guns, bolt action rifles, and needless to say, you've got some choices. Add to that, each weapon has a small armada of attachments and it can quickly overwhelm a player as to what is or isn't a useful choice for them. Thankfully, there are a lot of folks out there that have already done your work for you. Now when it comes to making choices, there are some very useful websites that I want to introduce you to if you don't already know about them, and they are Simthic and BF4Stats. Simthic has a lot of great community gathered information about weapons, their statistics, and gives you a wealth of great information that you can use to find out more about a particular weapon. BF4Stats is a great collection of information about players, what they're playing, and what statistics everyone has in the game. In addition, you can track down your own progress in the game and see how you're doing compared with other players. 
These two sites on their own are great resources, but if you combine them with Battlefield's battle log features, you can really obtain some solid insight on how to play the game. Here's a great technique for finding what attachments might be the best for a particular gun. Everybody has their own particular tastes, so keep that in mind. Let's look at how I might want to go about picking the best attachments for the SG-553, a carbine weapon. Using SimThick as a resource, let's look at how to analyze a weapon quickly. Looking at the SG-553, it has a moderate bullet velocity and a relatively high fire rate of 830 rounds per minute. The left-right recoil is relatively high at .3 and .5 respectively, and it has a modest vertical recoil at .3. Now before I lose some of you, this means that as I fire the gun, it's going to push the gun 0.3 degrees higher each bullet, and left or right at 0.3 or 0.5 degrees. At face value, the gun looks like it's going to be a mid-range to close quarters weapon, so I'm going to probably choose attachments that will help it be better at that role. There are some fine guides around the internet as to what each attachment does, and I'm not going to go into depth into attachments in this video. But I will show you how to make some good judgment using other top players as a reference. Personally, I try to find the best attachments that suit what a gun is already good at. So for my next step, I'm going to open BF4 Stats and go to the Leaderboard segment. From here, you can find stats for your platform of choice. Since I'm on PC, I'm going to use that. Scroll down until you find the weapon that you want, and in this case we're going to go with the SG-553. Now, we have a list of all the top players using the SG-553. Chances are, they know what they're doing with this weapon, and they'll be a good source of information. Of course, they could also individually be crazy, so I like to look at a number of them and see if there's a general consensus. From here, take down their names, and then go to Battle Log and look up their profile. Click on their soldier name, their loadout, and since they're one of the top weapon users in the world, they'll usually have their weapon of choice equipped. From there, click on the gear icon to see what attachments they are using. If you don't see that weapon equipped, you can still get that information by clicking on the currently equipped weapons picture, and then finding that weapon in the lineup. In this case, the player has chosen the reflex red dot sight, the compensator, and the ergo grip. These are all great choices for the weapon, and help play to its strength as a mid to close range weapon. Of course, these choices might not agree with you, so you'll need to experiment to find what you like. So I have a bit of a task for you. If you're looking to improve your aim, one of the best things you can do is to equip a weapon with limitations. In this case, I want you to equip either the M16A4 or M4. Their limitation is that they are burst fire only. These weapons, while good on their own, will get your muscle memory trained into firing weapons in bursts and controlling your shots. Try them out for a week, find attachments using the method I showed you, and try those out. But most of all, I want you to focus on your aim and control. When the week is over, go back to the automatic weapons and see how much your aim has improved now that you've gotten used to controlling weapons. You might even find that you prefer the burst weapons, in which case, keep on using them. As one final bit of wisdom, remember that you will always miss every shot that you don't take. That's the basics of improving your aim, YouTube. As always, thank you for watching, and leave a comment if you think there's something I didn't cover well enough for you, or if you'd like to see me cover that topic in the future. If you found this video helpful or insightful, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.